Brent here from quatlabs.net. I just wanted to show people the potential of uh, clustering and parallelization of uh, R uh, jobs uh, using some kind of uh, modeling simulation, be it uh, Monte Carlo, Rima, whatever. It takes up a lot of time to run a process. Um, what I'm about to show you is using Redis with R through a do Redis uh, package. What we're looking at right now is all the Redis uh, queries and stuff, a basic search on Redis. These are search results on my channel at Quant Labs. Um, and uh, there's various uh, uh, videos I've got showing you how to set this up for Linux, uh, Windows, and how to do it within R. Um, this is the end result. I just want to show the differences between a single threaded uh, process of running an R model and uh, setting up with uh, various uh, uh, Redis workers. So uh, what I'm going to do is I uh, just want you to be aware of a few caveats. First I'm using the Redis server on Windows. Okay now there's a video on this how to sh shows you how to set this up. This is not recommended at all for uh, any production type of environment. Um, you need to really set up your Redis server on a Linux environment. And again these videos here show you how to do that. So under the services uh, panel, um, just for demoing purposes, I've just set up this Redis server for Windows. So everything I'm going to show you, including the uh, Redis workers, are all local on this desktop. Now this desktop has uh, is an i7, which is the fastest you can potentially get with uh, 8 megs of uh, RAM. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my R Studio. Now this script you've pretty well seen. It's part of the do Redis. Uh, environment. I'm not going to go into great detail here. You can easily get that um, through my videos and I've shown references where to go. But what I want to show you is that there's already an environment um, set up for Redis using the script. Um, what I'm wanting to show in this video is the difference between a single threaded and a uh, another uh, Redis uh, loop um, here. Um, uh, with one worker which is within this R process and I'm going to set up four other Redis um, workers uh, to show you the difference in speed. Again, everything I'm going to do is all local on Windows but um, essentially your uh, Redis workers can be set up on Windows but the server itself for Redis should be as I said on Linux not um, something like this using the services for Redis server uh, uh but this demo I'm doing it um, there's all kinds of wonky weird problems I'm already currently finding uh, using this setup so again Linux for the Redis server so let's go ahead and set everything up as I said we've already got our workspace uh, initialized with uh, uh, all our data in place so all we're really going to focus on in this demo is um, setting up our uh, cluster which is uh, the do redis we're going to set up a generic job queue um, and uh, let me just show you what we're going to do here so right now we just set up the cluster through this block of code in r um, and then we're, we're like i sorry already said we got this function the f functions already uh, in the workspace as well as this other one g uh, which is a function reference from that f function so let's run the loop okay uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what happens. So right now this loop is running in the background and what you're getting is is a graph of how many iterations of this loop are running per second. As it stands, because it's a single threaded, um, it's only running up to 44 iterations per second. Now it'll slowly grind up to about 150 as you can see in this is this graph here. It just depends upon how uh, the Windows OS operating system time slices the processes. But usually at some point within this iteration of 10,000, it will uh, plateau at about usually between 150 to 170 iterations per second. Now again, that's single threaded. Okay, So uh, you can see that already and it just plateaus until it completes the uh, loop. Now, the other thing is with this for each, uh, this is using a, a special for loop um, that works in conjunction with the do Redis package. Um, and that's just no different than a regular for loop. So there you go, it's completed the loop. You see how long it took. 
so what I've got over here in my in command prompts, I've got over four processes for do Redis. Um, so let me just show you basically what the code is. Um, we've got uh, just one line loads in the do Redis package, but it also registers centrally with the Redis server here, um, and it registers itself as a worker into that generic queue called jobs. And remember, I've already set up the, the, the queue uh, right here. So it's going to uh, register the queue into Redis, and then it's going to start the local workers. Um, and in this case, I'm going to show you, I've, like I said, I've got two, no, sorry, four R workers, or do Redis workers, or Redis workers, whatever you want to call them, and there's four of them. Now you saw how long that uh, this took to, to, to run. So let me just show you one example. So essentially, what I'm doing on the dot in this uh, DOS command uh, prompt is I'm running R script and this script called do Redis demo worker, which is essentially this code right here. Um, and I'm going to run four of those processes. So uh, let me just get everything all set up within my um, do Redis so I can register the queue, which is done up here. So right here, I've just this line right here now registers within Redis a new queue called jobs. So now I can start uh, initiating my Redis workers. There's the first one. So it's now waiting for Redis jobs or do Redis jobs. So I'm going to set one of these e uh, each up. There's the second one. Uh, the fourth one down here. Here's the third one. It's all set up, waiting for Redis, do Redis jobs. And let's do the last one. Uh, uh, should be this one. Nope. Nope. Ah, there we go. There's the fourth one. So we have four Redis workers waiting for Redis jobs. So essentially, they've again, they've registered, as in this code, right here they've registered uh, with Redis uh, and it's uh, registered as uh, into the jobs queue and that's what each of these workers basically do does now essentially remember I showed you in the first uh, process or the first simulation you were only getting about hundred and fifty iterations per second I mean that's what it can peak at It's up to about 150 to 170 so when I rerun this code this little block here, no different than what I did before. This should run, and hopefully you'll see how fast uh, the Redis will run now. Okay, so you see right here that the Redis workers are working with uh, sharing within that cluster. So everything's kind of working, but you'll see in the graph that it's going to start spiking up. But you see how fast it was just already. It's a lot faster. Um, based upon, I can uh, get the horsepower of this of up to uh, six seven hundred iterations per second um, so let me just uh, do that again if you don't believe me but you see how much faster it is so I'm gonna let Redis kill these uh, Redis workers which you have to allow the uh, Redis server to do so that's just an instant right there just tore down the Redis uh, worker um, process for uh, the queue jobs I'm gonna set it all up again Okay, uh, I just want to show you how fast this thing is. So, um, in one of my webinars for my members, um, I've shown how uh, you could have right now you're working with about uh, a 10,000 observations. Uh, with the data that I've seen from the tick data or the one minute bars, we can go up to almost 5 million. Uh, observations so this is just a, a very small demo compared to something like that but you already see hopefully the difference um, between the single threaded R process and essentially uh, four um, Redis workers in this cluster I, I mean, remember it's all local but uh, let me just uh, run that block of code again with the 10,000 or maybe I might bump it up to let's say uh, hmm not sure if this will work 
let's say if I bump it up to 50,000, see how much of a difference it'll make. I haven't done this before, so this might bomb out. I don't know, but let's give it a shot. So um, now remember, I just did the remove queues, so I have to re-register all the, the, the queues. So we're just going to run this set of code again. This re register do Redis. Okay, so the register or the queue job should now be registered within the Redis server. Okay, so we know that f again f function and the g uh, result of that f function is already already in the workspace. Nothing's changed except the amount of uh, iterations that we're going to do. So now we're going to do 50,000. See what happens here, because um, I want to show you a better output. Um, so we got um, just we got one, two, three, four. So they're all waiting for Redis jobs. So now, once we run this set of code, it should run. So hopefully I can show you how fast this is and how many iterations we've got. Okay, let's give it a shot and see what happens. So um, the Redis is just going through the process, so it just handed all the jobs to these workers. And let's see what happens with our plot. Um, it might take uh, five times as fast, but hopefully uh, this graph will show you um, how high and how fat how many iterations per second we we have running so right now we're running at 56 um, hopefully uh, it'll get get climb higher it eventually does again it just depends upon the order time slicing of uh, the windows uh, and what's happening in the background of windows but you can see it's steadily spiking um, and all the little workers are doing their thing uh, and again, uh, I need to remind you, uh, you should watch these videos before you understand what's happening here. Um, so right now we're up to 78. And uh, my earlier tests with a cleaner environment uh, with less uh, uh, other processes running, um, looks like it's completed. Let me just make sure that's the case. So. I think it's finished the 50,000. Um, probably just see what the value of J is. Now again, I've never done this before. Um, yeah, J, it just basically ran out at, at uh, 1,000 because this was already predefined for, uh, for sorry, for 10,000. So either way, you can see that the spike is probably nearly doubled. But as I said, with some of the demos I've, I've tested, um, with these four workers, it can go up to four times as many. So essentially, if you're plateauing at 150 in a single threaded, it can easily go up to 800. So these little processes uh, don't take up a lot of memory. If you have a private network, you can easily set them up to a local through a router and set up your own network. So it's very powerful. There's no black box uh, techniques here. Um, basically, it's just a demo, uh, the power of, of setting up your own cluster through something like Redis. Uh, it's fairly intelligent, failover. Um, it's still primitive, but again, you have the source code all free. Um, it's pretty cool, and this is another way to save like thousands of dollars uh, on using something like uh, uh, Windows, HPC, IBM Symphony, and as well as uh, as well as if you're going to do what I'm doing here with an R. Um, uh, you know, trying to do this in MATLAB would cost you pff, neighborhood of a, a lot of money, fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars, in around there. It just depends upon your uh, workers and how many um, cores you're using. But uh, hopefully, I'll give you an idea on the difference with these clustering and uh, the performance. As for the source code, um, this will be available uh, to my premium members. So there's a little link. Uh, for the access and then you get yourself access to this code. Uh, hopefully this will help you out and um, other than that, talk to you later.